Hey everybody, welcome back to Everyday Journey. Today we're going to work on a power feed. Um, this came off of a, I think it was a milling machine at my work. Um, who knows when they used it last, but they were having issues with it so they took it off. Then they took it apart and tried to figure out what was wrong with it. And I don't believe they ever did, so um, we've got it plugged in here, see what's going on with it. As I understand, this right here should be your forward and reverse. And I don't feel any difference between the two. Uh, this, I think, is our override, or we'll speed it up. And this is our drive speed, so we're not getting anything out of it at the moment. Um, I'm not sure. It also has a kind of a broken limit switch here. Um, the switches are intact, but the part that actuates it is not there, so um, when you push it, nothing really happens. Um, it does have the detent, so it seems like it's working. Um, but the only way we can try to figure out what's wrong with this is to take it apart. So first thing, we'll unplug it. So as you can see, this is a uh, servo products company. This is servo feed. Um, type 140, if that means anything to you guys. Um, this is a, an American one, so it's 110. Let's go ahead and start by taking our knobs off. We've got these little set screws in the sides of the knobs. Just release those or unscrew those, pull that off. Um, yeah. This is our directional handle. It's got a set screw in the bottom. Go ahead and take that off. Uh, looks like this little cover comes off. Just try to make sure you keep everything in the same order so whenever it goes back together. Um, I don't see anything else. Of course, this one's missing the back cover, or bottom cover, I guess you'd say. Um, but let's go ahead and take this gear off. Mine is just a half inch drive. So we'll go ahead and take that off. Looking for any uh, any breakage in the gears or anything like that. I don't see any, but since this thing's not working at all, then uh, there's got to be something, some other reason. Typically, you'd hear it hum or something, so it's either got some type of like blown fuse or don't really know. So we got these four Allen, and I believe these are, uh, my Allen wrench doesn't even have a size on it, so. It looks to be about 530 seconds, but there's no telling exactly, since I can't see the size anymore. I can kind of feel a spring load on this. So as we take it apart, just need to pay attention to that. Make sure that you're holding it together and letting it loose ever so gently so that things don't just fly apart. That pretty much applies to everything. You can see right here it's already just popping loose. So it's definitely got a, a spring load on it. There's a cover. Um, let's see what we got here. Well, it looks like here on top, here's our switch that we were seeing. 
here is an inside shaft that looks like it's turning this potentiometer here which is about right because that's your speed control um, we've got this outside shaft here that looks like it's controlling a switch down here but it doesn't look like it's controlling the switch all the time for some reason so let's see what we can see about that oh I see what's going on with it let's see if that might be our problem I'm going to carefully plug this in and then we will see what we get so our switch here yeah I heard it click Get our speed control nothing's turning on yet let's see about the switch down here oh there we go so our switch at the bottom that's our power and yeah I was right this right here this outer outer thing here this is actually uh, controlling the switch down here for direction and what's going on is and we'll use this as a demonstration the as you turn it it's got a pin that sticks out like this right here and that pin as it turns is supposed to be engaging that switch um, the switch itself is kind of like this right here it's got a piece that goes over it like this and as you turn it one way it actuates the switch this way you turn it the other way and it pushes it down and pushes it back the other way so that's what gives you your uh, what, what actuates the direction problem is that this is outside of that part so it's not engaged anymore on the switch so we need to figure out how to get that engaged again so let's go back and unplug it again so how do we get to that uh, there's a screw right here holding this this switch this is your like override switch or full power switch that's what will make this thing go full speed and override the potentiometer so go ahead and take that off and get that out of the way um, gotta be able to get to all that down there so we gotta take this loose looks like it's just got a pin right here of course this is spring loaded so just gotta be careful with it. Alright. Alright, there we go. Let's just get that out of the way. And now, let's zoom in there so you can see what I was talking about. Alright, so this is probably not very clear. Eh, maybe it is. Let's get this out of the way for you. So, right here, you can see the pin that's sticking out on this. So, as you turn it, that pin. It's supposed to be engaged in that switch at the bottom but instead it can just freely go wherever it wants so we need to get it back in that switch down there so what we gotta do is turn this all the way to the bottom and then make sure it engages in this switch at the bottom so I think since we are starting with the side that's closest to the camera we need to move the switch in that direction there we go now you see as we turn it back and forth it actuates both sides of the switch so that's the way it's supposed to be and here's a thing right here at the top there's a detent on this that this has got a roller at the bottom of it well this right here has a roller on the bottom of it and it's supposed to be in that detent so it needs to be like that so 
Now as is, you can uh, you could still roll that thing around. You can still roll it around to where that would come out of that switch. Let's zoom back out. So if we rolled, spun this around too far, that would definitely uh, make it come back out of that switch. So what we need to do is figure out how to keep it from coming out of that switch so we don't have this problem again. So right now we're putting our, our override switch or our full power switch back on. So let's see, let's make sure that's what's everything's working right. So we got power and It's a little tough to spin now because of that detent there. Let's see if we can't put this back on. Hey, wait a minute, look at that. That right there is what would actually keep that switch in the right place. There's a pin on the side of here. So as this was in place properly, that pin right there wouldn't allow it to turn any further than what's in this slot right here, which would make sure that it stays where it's supposed to be. So I think uh, I'm pretty sure that's that's what we're dealing with so let's go ahead and just put it back together because that seemed like it was working go ahead and put, unplug it again put our cover on the right way Again, this is spring loaded, so I guess we're going to push it down from this side. It actually has a hole for this uh, set screw to go in on this. So we got to make sure we get that set screw in there. That could have been part of the problem before. Or part of what caused this problem anyway. Now you can see it clearly is using that detent. So let's go ahead and put our speed control back on. This one right here we're gonna just slightly screw it down because I want to get that with the zero facing where it's supposed to be. So let's go ahead and plug it back in. Let's see what she does. So now Go one way, speed control all the way down, and that's our zero point, so we want to go ahead and unscrew that and reset it right there for the zero to be at the top. Okay, let's try reverse. We'll go back down to the low speed. Let's go ahead and try this. And we push our override button up to full speed. So it looks like everything is working. Only issue is this. And you can see inside here. I actually have the, the cover for that but I don't have any of the, the actual uh, 
Anyway, my alarm's going off. Alright, so I have a cover for that, but I don't actually have any of the actual pieces that, the switches that stick out each side, that actuate on it. So, we'd have to make something for that, or just get a new, new housing overall. Um, but, let's see, if we push one, there we go, it, it cut off, you see that? So the limit switch is working, let's try the other way. So that way it's turning. We push the other limit switch. Yeah, so it is working. We just don't have anything to actually actuate it. So who knows? We may be able to buy that part. Or we may be able to make something. But either way, this thing is actually working again. So what it does need is to be cleaned. It does need a cover down here for this gear to make sure it's safe. But you could always fabricate one or maybe even buy one as a replacement part um, and it does need this limit switch here that way you can make sure your table doesn't slide too far one way or the other well I appreciate you guys watching I've never taken apart anything like this before so uh, at least nothing specific like this um, but all the components inside there I've seen before and other things so that's part of the reason why I take apart everything I can find so we've actually got it fixed somewhat safety you'd want to be able to fix all the other things on it but as far as working order it is working so hopefully that helped you guys out maybe you have the same issue with something and uh, maybe that'll help you figure it out and get it get it right what I expected to see is that this thing would maybe just work some and uh, and but it wouldn't go the opposite direction um, but it's going both directions everything's working like it should so as always, I appreciate you watching, and uh, you guys take care.